On the Ground, presented by The Cube. Here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in San Ramon at the GE Digital headquarters, about 1,500 people making great software to not only run the GE products themselves, but now they're taking it to the next level with the industrial internet, their Pritix cloud that they announced about six months or so ago, and really extending that now all the way down to the edge. So we wanted to get the one-on-one. What exactly are we talking about? Let's just get right to the basics and we're really excited to have Nikhil Chohan on, Director of Product Marketing, Pritix GE Digital, welcome. Good to be here, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, we've been talking a lot about cloud, a lot about Pritix, a lot about industrial internet and IoT, and the buzzwords are flying all over the place. So That's let's true. just kind of break it down. What exactly is Pritix? Yeah, so Pritix is a complete edge to cloud platform. It is a platform that could be deployed at the edge of the network as well as in the, in the cloud. So we talk about this whole edge to cloud continuum where the platform has technologies which can run at the edge of the devices in the cloud and be able to orchestrate application logic, data and control at various levels. Right, so we talk a lot about kind of horses for courses. So depending on what the application workload is, some portion of that might be executed at the device or some subset of devices, logical business unit, however you define it, and some set would be back up in the cloud. That is very true, Jeff. So the way we look at, at the whole platforming is, Predix is obviously a horizontal platform which allows the applications to be built at, at the top. Uh, as a platform, it provides the ability to run this application logic, data, control, uh, where it actually makes the most sense for the business value. So you can run all these things at an individual sensor level, at a congregation of sensors and hubs and nodes. You can run it at uh, gateways, controllers, on-premise servers, infrastructure equipment at the edge, as well as in the cloud. So this is the whole edge to cloud continuum we're talking about, which is powered by Predix. And when, uh, that's interesting because some people when they say edge, they might think like that last, that last, I don't want to say mile, yeah. millimeter, right? The actual sensor that's on the final device. But as you just kind of walk through, there's a lots of, of edges, if you will, as you walk back away from that one individual sensor, back to different collections of meaningful units. Yeah, edge to us, uh, we believe that, that edge as a, as a word is actually talking about the physical location which is allowing closing, uh, computing close to the source of data. So it's either a gas turbine, it's a 60,000 foot, uh, 65 foot tall uh, oil and gas blower preventer, it's locomotive engines which are running at 70 miles per hour. So, and then again, you have sensors, you have edge gateways, controllers, et cetera. So wide variety of devices. Okay, so a lot of people are familiar with the cloud, all the benefits of the cloud, um, especially on the consumer side and, and, and even in enterprise technology. Why is the cloud and then this combination with edge such a powerful combination for the industrial internet? Very interesting, Jeff. So because I think what we've learned so far has been that we have been great admirers of cloud. We have been using Predix as a cloud platform. Uh, and we know that cloud has those I'm sorry, economies of scale, et cetera. However, cloud only model has its own share of limitations. The limitations being cloud computing always assumes, and majority of cases assumes that connectivity is always there. And what we've learned so far is that industrial applications uh, may not have the best optimal connectivity in, in there. So they either run in air gap environments, it's probably due to regulatory compliance or security issues, for example. So connectivity is really a, a key um, assumption uh, with cloud-only models, so that's one. The second one is centralizing all the analytics. So once you're uh, taking all this data and pushing it in the cloud, all we are doing is we're basically analyzing all that stuff only in cloud, which obviously adds latency, but also doesn't give the ability to run analytics at various levels, which are closer to the point of control, closer to the edge. So that's number two, that's, uh, that's really the, uh, the centralizing analytics piece. Third one is obviously latency, because in mission critical applications, you have to have systems which have to be deterministic, that have to run in real time or near real time uh, situations, and you have to have very short, small latency time periods. So those are cloud only deployment models. Now we believe that uh, in industrial applications, you really need to have both edge and cloud working together, working in tandem. So we, we truly believe that 
you know, that's really the, the key strategic architectural choice, which has to be a marriage of both of those worlds. Right. Um, edge uh, computing, working in tandem with cloud, solves and addresses these limitations. Uh, so it basically talks about four use cases or addresses those four use cases. One being it reduces that system latency. Uh, so you know, we, we, we realize that 60% of the data that is collected loses any meaningful uh, value for analytics in just a few milliseconds. So you really have to ensure that you have a very short latency time frame for, uh, for systems, uh, and that is where edge computing can help. So it's really reducing that system latency. It's adhering to SLAs. It's adhering to regulatory compliance requirements. So in mission critical applications such as industrial ones, or majority of the ones, you really have to ensure that the system latency is absolutely short, uh, and you have a deterministic way of, of those systems. You give an input, you have to provide an output in a particular time frame. So that's really addressing that SLAs. It's also ensuring that you're supporting some hybrid cloud situations uh, where it's probably needed by regulatory compliance, some geographical compliance requirements, et cetera. So that's number two. It's ensuring that you are addressing those SLAs, regulatory compliance requirements. Uh, third is avoiding any unnecessary transfer of data. So a typical airplane collects probably 10 terabytes of data every 30 minutes of flight. So you really don't need to transfer every single bit of it to the cloud. Uh, you have to make sure that you're doing some analytics at that point of control. Think about a locomotive engine tra traversing at 70 miles per hour, and it's sensing all the rail uh, addition things, it's sensing the, the exogenous data such as weather, and it's making some meaningful uh, analysis of the, the data at the edge itself. You cannot wait for that to go to the cloud and do some, uh, some analysis and, and push the brakes in time. Uh, so that's third. The final one is where you are offloading compute intensive tasks from some of these resource constant devices. So think about a mobile field worker who's having a mobile uh, phone or a device um, or you know, some sort of geek robotic equipment um, but you, you really need to have the ability for offloading some of these compute uh, cycles from these devices because these are power hungry devices, power consumption is really critical. Uh, you have to ensure that you're offloading computing from these to let's say edge gateways and still do analytics at the edge, uh, but just save those, uh, those power consumption cycles. So those are pretty much four use cases right, uh, right. for edge computing. Really makes me think of kind of, the, from the consumer point of view that we're familiar with is our mobile phones, right? Because if you're running an app on your phone, there's certain things that the, the app will do on the phone and there's certain things that happen back at the cloud. And, and you don't necessarily have to have the two exactly mirror. My favorite example was the original, or the Steve Jobs, I think, fourth generation of iPod. Yeah. It had no display. All it would do is, we shake it, you go to the next, the next song, and that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, he was smart. Well, you don't need that at the edge. You need that back at the computer. You can manage your playlist, you can do everything else. But if you're jogging, you don't need that. It was kind of the first breakthrough where you can start to break up functionality, break up logic, break up control, break up data to different components that are all connected to really the same application, but they don't all need to exactly mirror one another. And that's Absolutely. really kind of what you're talking about. Absolutely, that's exactly what we're talking about. It's really the, the whole edge to cloud computing, distributed computing architecture, where you can utilize all these different layers of compute uh, and processing so that you can run that application logic, you can orchestrate the analytics up or down based on the prescribed use case and the outcome that the customer is interested in. Right, uh, another really key piece is kind of the, the partner ecosystem yep. because you guys, um, you, know, you have, you have uh, hardware and you have software in these fields, but these are big complex systems, there's historic stuff that's there, there's stuff that's not General Electric that needs to work um, together, especially in the context of of, of an economically defined, you know, I'm going to mm -hmm. keep stealing that line. Um, so, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the, kind of the partner strategy and and how you deal with kind of in, incumbent technologies and incumbent systems uh, and pull those into you know the value benefit for the customer. Absolutely. Um, you know, just like any other company, G cannot do this alone. We really need a village to support us. Uh, and really, the number one challenge that we are seeing from our customers' point of view is that they are sitting in a heterogeneous environment. They just don't want to deal with GE equipment. They have a non-GE equipment base as well. And um, they have to make sense of the data that's coming off of GE and non-GE equipment. So as a platform, 
we're trying to ensure that we bring in the right set of ecosystem players so that you have a platform play and a single point of contact for the customer so that they can build these, these devices in a way that, that is standardized, uh, which makes these machines in, into software-defined machines. Now you have machines which are social, which are interoperable, which have the ability to autom autonomously connect to the industrial internet, have the ability to execute native or cloud-based apps, as well as analyze the collected data and securely respond to changes in that data. Uh, we, are, we are obviously looking at open, um, open source uh, software as well as a number of ecosystem providers to help us do edge analytics, et cetera. Um, but uh, again, I think the whole point of view from a platform perspective is to provide that standard scalable software framework that can work across a wide variety of machines, GE or non-GE, regardless of their vendor or vintage. Okay, and final question, how do people get started on this journey, right? Like you said, you're dealing with people that have big infrastructure, it's in place, it's been running for a long time. Um, they've, they've kind of bought into to, to doing it better. Everyone needs no one planned downtime and to get more out of what they have. So how are customers kind of getting started? Where, where, where are the points of entry yeah, uh, on this so, journey? Yeah, uh, so from a Predix uh, perspective, Predix is obviously a, a platform that is uh, that provides a number of services. On the edge side, it provides a technology called Predix Machine, which is the technology that allows um, providing that st standard software development kit for any kind of edge device to become software defined. So it can be a sensor hub, uh, you can be, you can have a controller which is coming from GE or non-GE, a gateway device. So you have a number of Predix ready devices which can use Predix machine stack, become software defined, and try to dial back to Predix cloud. You also have a technology called Predix connectivity which provides plug and play connectivity. So customers are using that so that they, they really use that, that service to not be at the mercy of specific carrier. It's a plug and play connectivity that works anywhere across the globe. So those are pretty much two different technologies that Predix provides. We do support a number of Predix ready devices. Predix ready devices are devices which are using these technologies, dialing back to Predix cloud, doing stuff at the edge itself, doing analytics, uh, but really talk to Predix through uh, standard APIs, standard integration points. So those are really three uh, different technology areas or spectrums that the customers are using today. Okay, great. And what's the best way for people to, to get involved? Yeah, uh, so the best way is Predix.io is really our developer-focused website, okay. which is where you can get all these SDKs, you can get to know what are the requirements for our Predix Ready Devices uh, frameworks, and uh, really, you know, connect all these diverse set of machines and talk to Predix Cloud. Excellent, well, Nikhil, thanks for taking a few minutes, I love it. You bet. GE is a software company, if you haven't seen all of the commercials yet, no doubt about it. I'm Jeff Frick, we're at GE Digital in San Ramon, you're watching theCUBE, catch you next time.